there he is painted up in my version of Capellan Green the beautiful new Vindicator model that you can get out of the new beginners box uh, plug in myself you know if you subscribe to the channel and you leave a like and a comment in October on November 1st you could win a new beginners box uh, there's a video on the channel I'll probably link in the description if you want to check, click on that video so I show off the Vindicator only to point out that uh, well I'll say like hmm you know, everybody enjoys different aspects of the hobby. Uh, I love playing the games. And I do not enjoy painting. Just honest. <laughs> painting is the least favorite thing of the hobby. And it sucks because I do like playing so much. So please excuse me with my models not being painted i kind of i kind of get a little anal when i paint models i have stripped some of these models five or six times trying to get paint jobs right that's the hardest part for me is painting something i don't like i just want to redo it, it happens all the time but but my favorite part of the hobby is playing the games and doing stuff like this uh conversions and making terrain some of my favorite things to do so if by now you if you've seen our first alpha strike and classic battle report uh which a little little hint for uh, we're currently editing our second alpha strike battle report uh hopefully it'll be up this weekend uh if you've noticed you'll notice that you know our trees in those two battle reports are like this they're on these hex bases. And when I filmed the report, I had already been in the middle of transferring them over to these round 25 millimeter bases. So the next battle report is going to have all the trees on these. And these are, it's much nicer to have the trees on these 25 millimeter bases. They get in the way less, the mech fits on the square better. Uh, so, yeah, so this video is kind of be about the terrain that you've seen in our videos. Uh, and we're going to start with these trees. So the trees are eBay from China, you know, takes two months to get here, railroad, railroad trees. I think I paid 17 bucks and you can get a hundred trees and like, it was like free shipping. 17 bucks, a hundred trees, you will get 20 of these dark green ones and you will get 80 of these light green ones. Now, I had originally bought and put them on these hex bases because I had bought these hex bases to make my leveled terrain, my hills. And uh, I went back and what I had bought, I bought these round bases instead to stick them on. I bought these round bases off Etsy. Uh, I think they were, well, let me see. I think 200, 200 of these round bases for twelve fifty plus some shipping. So you're talking about twelve fifty for two hundred bases, seventeen dollars for a hundred trees, you could get another hundred, so that'll be thirty four, and then you would have two hundred trees to go on two hundred bases. So for fifty bucks, fifty bucks and some spray paint. I spray painted my bases before drilling little holes in the bottom of the trees drilling holes through the the mdf woods pretty easy a little pinwise drill mounting them on there if you get your hole size right you don't even have to glue them um they they just slotted right in there real easy so yeah so 50 bucks you could have 200 of these nice trees and like i said these are just six millimeter railroad trees and it didn't take a lot of time to do it, even converting them over. You know, it just took like a night. A night to do. That's the trees. So those are the trees you see in our videos. Oh, see one come out right there. This one's off the, uh, the bases that I'm no longer using. That's not really worried. Now I wish that I could say that these were my idea. 
but I had saw them in a post where somebody had done it, and I really wish I could find that post. I can't remember. It might have been on DACA, but somebody, this was someone else's idea, and it was great. So, like, these are really simple to make. So I've got ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, and sixes. And uh, you could, you don't have to do them. You could just do all one inch, one inch little hills, and then you can make them modular. Just stack them one inch at a time on each other. These are so easy to make. So these are basically dowel rods, an inch and a quarter dowel rods that you'll buy at Lowe's. You can get a 48 inch dowel rod at Lowe's for six bucks. For six bucks, you get a dowel rod and Again, on Etsy, I think I, I go to the Flannex Consortium to buy my MDF hexes and bases, and they sell a hundred hexes for seven bucks. Hundred of those suckers. So you're talking about a hundred bases for seven dollars, two dowel rods for twelve dollars, and that comes out about twenty-five bucks tax and shipping and everything and you could have almost 100 inches of modular hex terrain and these grip those mats really good because it is wood i had basically i wish that i had the miter saw and i could do a video that shows these but i had actually borrowed a miter saw from a friend and cut those dowels into one inch pieces now when i'd cut mine i'd cut it to where i could mount a hex on the bottom and the top and after doing that it would be one inch high now after the fact so like this if you'll notice if you'll notice like here's one here's one and two but then if you do this see it doesn't line up correctly because what it's supposed to be is like that and then your one inch and your two inch rods will match up completely see the way i've got it i wanted this to be an inch and then this to be exactly two inches because what i had planned on doing originally was doing hexes on both ends this side in a green and this side in an alternate color but i ended up just going the green that i had chosen for these just kind of match with everything like you could go with a white mat or the the green mat the mat i use is a stratagem hex mat off Amazon which it's I think those are out of stock currently I really want to get the snow covered one uh, th they go for 70 bucks but you know these work great on the catalyst mats like same deal because they're the same hex sizes and these fit almost perfectly uh, but back to the wooden dowels you know I just tuck the dowel rods and I measured it out where once I had got and hex on both sides this equals one inch that would equal two inches that would equal three and that would equal four and i just cut them down with a miter saw uh, a tip if you do decide to make your own of these uh, that miter saw spend the money and buy a sharp blade because otherwise you will end up with these burrs and these burrs are just a pain in the butt, especially when you're doing like 300 of these things. I, mean, I just had to take like a file and I would go around doing this while watching TV, <laughs> getting those burrs off. Uh, get a sharp blade on your miter saw and there's less burrs to deal with. But yeah, so cutting those dowel rods down to the, the length that you want then using some cheap paint. I mean, you can go the super cheap way, get some apple barrel, apple barrel paint from Walmart, some brown and some green, or I think mine I had chosen to do. I just picked up a couple, a couple of rattle cans. Satin brown boots and satin pistachio. And the so the pistachio is for the top set hexes. And then after I'd painted them in the pistachio, I kind of just sprinkled some of the satin brown on the top. That's why it looks kind of speckled, my tops are. That's all I'd done. Oops. 
but this is a super cheap way considering what you can get out of it of making hills for your battle tech hex maps uh again i wish i wish i still had the the miter saw i could do a tutorial that i've got tons of these that i have not put the, put the uh inch and a quarter hexes on because I've got so many that I really don't need them if I wanted more. I mean, I've got an entire container of each size of these, except for the fives and sixes. I think the fives and sixes share a little bit. Uh, but that's how those are made. It's really simple. Uh, so another terrain idea that this, this, this is originally what made me get, gave me the idea to make this video. Uh, but I was at Michael's, and I've always wanted a easy, cheap way to make roads. And I found some stuff at Michael's that I think will work great. Uh, now, I've tried to make roads before out of just construction paper. You know, it wears out. It gets broken. Uh, harder than that. I've never really, I have searched for tutorials on how to do it, but I found some stuff at Michael's today that I thought would really work. So let's clear those out of the way. And, oh, side note, so like, here's a hundred of the inch and a quarter hex bases. Five millimeter round bases for the trees. I've got all my trees and round bases, and I bought I bought too many. I don't know what I'm going to use the rest of those for. So I was at Michael's, and I finally found a material that I thought would work great to make roads with, and that's this real thin foam sheets. I mean, it's pretty thin. It's it's pretty much the exact same thickness as it's about half the thickness of one of these bases. So these foam sheets and these cut really easy, and you can take these foam sheets and they also sold this at Michaels. Here you go. Some really thin double-sided tape. Now you don't have to use the second side. I was afraid this was going to be thick because it was double sided, but it's actually real thin. Uh, what is that size? 3.1 millimeters wide. And uh, so you can cut this in strips and then, and I'll do one in a minute and then uh, you can end up with that. Look at that. You know, so the way I did it, some of the sticky from the ones that I peeled off get off here. So I'm kind of concerned if those are going to collect dust. I kind of want to kill that sticky in between these ones. So uh, let's make one. It's pretty easy. So here's our foam board. Oops. I stopped hitting my camera. Here's my big old level. I found that this was perfect. Perfectly an inch wide. Let's go this way since we're doing this. Get it even with our current edge that we just cut. Good old hobby knife. Kind of rested on some stuff there. I don't want it to want it to be flat. So yeah, take your hobby knife. We'll do a second pass, just so we know that it went through. There we go. Look at that nice little strip.
strip of road in the making. Take our little double-sided tape. It's pretty thin. Now you could, you know, individually cut out each one, you know, but that'd be a pain in the butt. I just going to measure me off a strip to do the whole length. I think it would be better if you could do that, but it'd be kind of tedious getting the lines to be straight. I want the lines to be straight. But this is going to leave a little bit of sticky. A little bit of sticky. Now I'm doing this with the with the camera in the way, so I don't know if I'm going to get this one as dead center as I did the last one. But we'll try and make it look close. Say, eh, it's a little off. But for purposes of showing everybody how it's done, it's pretty easy. So now what I did is, well, I'm going to have to move up my cutting board a little bit better. So I put it about a quarter of an inch off of an inch line so that the ends, where my one go, my ends when they connect together, you know, they have a little bit of black on each end. And I will take my other hobby knife here and I'll get, make sure to get that line up on the quarter inch mark. And now, now we'll go down the line and do a little B cut on each half inch. And if I can do this, so it's not going to look as good because I'm trying to keep my head out of the shot. Just pop it every half inch. Way there. There we go. Now this double sided tape. Just uh, kind of peel it back a little bit. See if it pops off there. Come on now. There we go. Take your scissors and get that in one end off. We can just pull it off. There we go. Now the rest is, the rest are easier than that first one. You just bend it back. Pull off the white. Now, if I was taking my time, I would have made the cuts just barely perforating that tape. I don't know if it's going to show up. I don't think that's going to be a real issue. Like, when it's laying flat, you're not going to see those little extra cuts I got in there, I don't think. I'll be curious. Making a mess on my hobby table. There we go. Look at that. One more stretch of road. See if they would line up pretty easily. Like so. So I, I, I just took a yellow highlighter and went over these white lines. I think my highlighter's still upstairs though. It is not in the basement currently. But yeah, run a yellow highlighter over those. If you wanted to make the yellows real stand out, we could paint those yellow, I would imagine. 
or uh, I'd almost bought a yellow paint pen to go over them. I wasn't sure how that would do if it would get on the foam and it wouldn't if the foam if it would bleed into the foam or if it would show up on the foam. I wasn't sure about that. I knew the yellow highlighter wasn't going to show up. But yeah, so like yeah, you can't really see those cuts when it's laying flat. I think these would hold up a lot better than cardboard ropes. And it's pretty cheap. Pretty darn cheap. So I got three sheets of this foam. These were 99 cents. 99 cents for one of these sheets of foam. And this uh, tape was like, at Michael's, was like 250. So like, I would think those sheets are pretty much exactly the same size as this cutting board. So we're talking about 17, 18 by, what is it, 10, 11 inches, 18 by 11 inches of road. So like over 200 feet of road for with one sheet. I mean, that's going to be pretty good. I think those will look good. Uh, you, the next battle report that shows up will not have these in them, but you can bet the battle report after that will do some city train and uh, put some of these roads in there. So I think I think that'll be it. That's just a little terrain tutorial on how we do the train that you see in our battle reports. Uh, that's it from the battle basement. We'll catch you next time.